What is going on today, guys? Tomcat here, and today we are back in Forza Motorsport 7. Finally, right? It's been a good while since we've been in Forza Motorsport 7, and I booted up the game, went into the specialty dealer, and I was like, you know what? We're going to go ahead and build ourselves a good old-fashioned drift car, um, a Sylvia Kays, and I saw this in the specialty dealer, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and pick it up and do a do something that was really kind of back to my roots almost because I did a lot of like a ton of drift builds, you know, for a long time. And let's see, this is a we could Oh, this is a twin turbo V8 as well. Uh, so we could do the rocket bunny kit that they offer, um, or like the prefab setup that they offer. Um, but I think I'm going to just fit everything myself. I think I'm going to fit up everything myself, and I know we're going to do a V8 in this car, so, um, that's already been decided. Well, let's see. Um, hmm. We got an RB26. We've got 6.2 V8. We got to do, we could do a four rotor. I'm going to do a 6.2 V8 in this car. Um, like I said, this is going to be, I almost want to say partially a stereotypical drift car, but also, ooh, Oh, we could supercharge it as well. Yeah, let's do that. I want a positive displacement supercharger. That would be, that would be, I think, a really good... Because like I said, uh, we're doing something that's kind of back to my roots, back to how I started. And really, way back in Forza 4, I got started in drifting. Like, drifting is what I did. And I think a lot of it, a lot of that is still, you know still something that I enjoy doing, so I kind of want to see what we've got here for wings. I mean, the this wing looks good. I think it fits the idea of what we're trying to go for a little bit more so than the Forza wing, and also a little bit more so than that, I think, um, the trial wing. It's, it's kind of classic looking, but it doesn't really have quite as aggressive of a look at, as this one does, so that'll work, and then from there, we got to do, we got to do wheels and tires, because... Uh, we'll do, we'll do sport tires because we're going to need the extra grip. We're going to be putting out a lot of horsepower here. So let's see. 255s up front should be fine. And 255s, well, wait. You know what? A 255 square, I don't, I honestly don't think it'd be too bad of a setup because I know, again, like I said, we're going to be putting down a ton of power, but we want to be able to spin the wheels um, as quickly as possible, too. We want to be able to spin the wheels at the drop of the hat. So, at the drop of a hat, I should say. So, with that being said, I think... Hmm. hmm. I like those a lot. I want to kind of change the color, though, so you can bring them out a little bit and, like, like bring the color... Bring the color of the wheels out, and you, so you like so you can actually see them. But I think the style fits the car. And let's see for wheel size. I'm gonna literally leave them the size that they are, um, because I think that it 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 suits the car, right? It gives it this rugged look to have a, just a little bit more um, sidewall than uh, than necessarily trying to run like you know a 19 inch wheel, so to speak. Let's go ahead and get the diff in there. Get everything set up, ready to go. And then from there, we can head over to do, to do the everything in the platform. We'll get the brakes handled. We'll get the suspension handled because, frankly, once those things are handled, I mean, this thing is technically ready to hit the track, um, but we need to do a few more things, in my opinion, first um, to really finalize the car and get everything squared away with how I think it should be. Cage is going in because I want this to be, you know, a serious car. And then we'll go ahead and do our weight reduction stuff, get that done and out of the way and sort it out. And then for the engine, it's pretty much going to be a full build. I don't really I don't really think there's anything that I particularly want to avoid here. Um, I think it's going to be more along the lines of what don't I want to put in the car? You know, is there anything that I don't want to put, put in this engine? Um, and frankly... There's not much that I don't want to put in this engine. Um, I want to throw as much power at this engine as I can. And I know that some people are like, well, you need to limit your power on a drift car um, to keep it, you know... I, like, some people feel like if you go with too much power in a drift car, it's too easy. And to a certain extent, I understand that, right? To a certain extent, I get where you're coming from. But, I mean, and that idea has been around since... 
you know, Forza 3, Forza 4, but it's been around for a long time. But I think, you know, if I want to build a really challenging drift car that's also properly dialed in, you can do that with two, three, four hundred horsepower just fine. This car is going to make over a thousand horsepower because I want it to just absolutely rip. I, w I want it to be something that I can just bring this car out and nothing, you know, and nothing else in my garage can touch it at that point. So this, this car will probably be more of a long-term project for me in terms of a drift setup, but we're going to go with, let's see, for final drive ratio, I'm going to go with a 410 because I feel like that's not too far off from where it started. Um, camber wise, we're going with negative three and a half up front. And I think about negative two in the back, little bit of toe out as, as well in the front. Um, soften up the front sway bar a bit. Springs are going to get a little softer in the front as well. We're going to drop the ride height all the way. And for the dampening, I'm just going to soften it a tad up front. Not too, too much. And then for the brake bias, we're going to bias it a little bit to the front in case we want to trail the car in on the brakes instead of, instead of the e-brake. Um, and then we're going to go with a 90... And a, I'm, I'm thinking, because normally I'll go with like an 85, 95, or 85, 75, or like a 90, I think I'm going to go with a 90, 75 on this car, and see how that feels, see how that does, and see how I like it. There, you can see how the car is sitting now, like way, way more aggressive, and it looks a lot more dialed in now much better. So now I want to put a paint job on this car that really, really pops. That's the other thing that I really want to do to it is put a paint job on it that when you look at it, you're like, oh, okay, that looks that not necessarily like something crazy, but just something that really jumps out and says, I'm, you know, says I'm here, you know, I'm ready to party. I'm ready to have some fun. Let's back out of that. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go in there. It wasn't even my plan. I, why did we end up in... You know what? We're not even going to question why we ended up in there. Um, we got to do the standard paint color first. So let's see here. Um, we're going to want... Like I said, we want something that pops. I want something bright too. Like I... Let's see. Can we... No. The pris I wish you could alter um, these Prismacolor... Uh, Colors, really. I wish you could kind of go in and fine-tune the coloring, because if you could, that would make it so... Well, I guess you kind of can with the Metal Flake paint jobs, but it, it becomes a little, I don't know, iffy at, at that point. But let's see. It's the primary color. Um, I think I might want... Because I've got a few different things in mind, like for a primary base, I've got like a yellow idea and then like sort of a green. And this looks horrible right now, but I'm going to do a flake, change the flake color. See if I can sort of bring a little bit more of that out. That's kind of, that's kind of different. Not sure how I feel about it, but it's kind of... I don't like that. I feel like there's a really there's a really weird like sweet spot with these colors to where your car can end up looking really, really unique and, and cool. Or just like an eggplant. So, <laughs> I, I'm trying to find a happy medium. And it's not always the easiest thing to find. So, sometimes you have to uh, go back and mess with the base color, mess with the flake color... Um, a few different times just to get it to where you like it. But once you get it to where you like it, it generally ends up being pretty good. That is ridiculously bright. And I know it's not too different. Like, the colors are pretty similar to each other. But there's just enough of a difference that it really pops when the light hits the car. I, I like that a lot. I wonder how this would look with a carbon fiber hood. Um, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I'll run it. And then we'll run carbon mirrors. And I wonder if it'll let us do... Yes, it will. Okay, sweet. We're gonna run carbon pieces on the wing as well. And for the wheels... See, this is where it gets interesting. I kind of want to run a... Like a silver... Silver-ish wheel. 
Um, I feel like you could do the Prismacolor white, but it doesn't really show up. The Prismacolor black does show up. Um, we could do carbon, but I don't know if the carbon accents itself like as well. I feel like since we already have it, you know, on the the hood, the mirrors, the wing, I feel like we could do something. Oh, the semi gloss brass. The semi gloss brass actually looks really good on that car. It looks, it, it, it ties everything together, I think. God, when I saw that, I was like, I, I didn't even want to see any other colors. I was like, this is it. This works. It, it, I, I, I like this. You know, carry on. I like this. This is good. Now comes the best part. We get to go and drive the car. So uh, let's go ahead and test this thing. Well, you know what? Let me see if there's anything in Rivals that this car fits into, um, and I don't know if it will or not, but let's see. Uh, early sport touring, no. Rear-wheel drive drift car with a PI of 550. This is definitely not 550. I don't, I, there's no way this is 550. Uh, um, yeah, I was gonna say, there's no way. It's 804. Yeah, uh, no. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's no freaking way that it's 540. So, or, 550? Yeah. So, let's see. Showroom Rally and MX-5. Okay, so that's it. That's all we get for that. So, you know what that means? That means we're about to go into free play and drift this thing ourselves. And where better to take it than Maple Valley? Um, because, again, I wanted to do something that was very back to my roots and maple valley was one of the first places that i ever did a drift tutorial video so i'm gonna head back there and uh oh where did i put it where's maple valley there it is. no there it is all right four laps should do uh zero drive guitar should do daytime let's do it and let's see let's let's run this thing should be a real ripper, like, it should be a monster, especially with the, um, I mean, dude, putting out just over a thousand horsepower from a, you know, from a V8 that's also supercharged, it's gonna be instant torque all the time, it's gonna be an on-off, like, an on, off, well, pretty much always on switch for torque. And it's also an on-off switch that you control, there's, I mean, well... Not to say that you don't control it with a turbo, but there's nothing to wait for. Joy driving cars with getting on the throttle a little early and like waiting for the boost to kind of arrive and then you can carry it on. But I definitely appreciate the feel of a good supercharged setup. My god, alright. We'll do a little bit of warming up first. Holy crap. Oh, God. Wow, this car is easy to recover. Oh, my God. This is so easy to recover from angle. It's insane. There she goes. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Just trying to get a feel for it right now. Let me do a little bit of cockpit view because to be honest cockpit view is i mean if ooh, if you don't know it's my best view um and i just feel so much more confident in cockpit view i don't know why i just know that that's where i'm the most confident and if i'm really trying to test out a car i usually go to cockpit view first honestly i kind of feel like we could go with a longer rear end ratio because this thing just has so much power It's ridiculous how much power... Like, look, you can carry the lines wherever you want them because you have so much power at your disposal that you can just... You can get wheel spin on demand, obviously, and you can use that wheel spin on demand to carry the car in any direction you want. Absolutely any direction you want. Come on, there you go. Try to position the car try to position the rear of the car uh, near the edge of the track on oh god so we can no oh the center of the car just touched the edge and yeah once the center of the car touches the edge that's when you're done but 
I mean, never to, you know, not to worry. We have three more laps left that we, you know, for us to test this car. And plus, we're still testing it right now. All right. Oop, oop. Come on. Real close to the inside. Oh. Okay. Maybe a little too close to the inside. I always, see, I always thought that taking the inside there was a good approach. And it is, as long as you carry back to the outside again. Let's try and get a good entry here. Oh god. Oh. Just a tad iffy. I feel like, honestly, that could have been way better, but, I mean, it's weird because we initiated well before the scoring zone, and usually that's always what you want to do, but if you can time it just perfectly, you can sometimes get an even bigger advantage. Oh. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Run it through, run it through. And trust me, hanging out on the rev limiter is okay sometimes with, you know, when you're doing this kind of thing. Like, hell yeah, dude. Hang out on the rev limiter all you want. Keep it away from the wall. Oh my god. That was pretty nuts. Oh, oh no. Oh god. Wow, that, that cut so close to the edge. That cut so freaking close to the edge. Oh man. I think that one was one of my closest ones um, to being to being like a wall hit that that didn't happen. Oh oh oh! Don't lose it. <laughs> Don't lose it, Mac. Oh God, we're not playing Need for Speed Payback. Come on. Back the other way. I just love how you can get the wheel spin whenever you want it. I mean, and you also pretty much have torque at any RPM. Again, just supercharged V8 things, really. Let's try not to lose this score this time. Oh, God. There we go. Come on, let me see 40,000. Not bad. Get it through. Where's 45? Oh, man, I wanted to see 45,000 so bad. Was I? Wow, I didn't think that you could do, like, okay, let's run third person now. Oh, God, all right. You guys are about to see how I, remember how I said I was so much better in first person than I was in third person? At least, I, I feel like I am. It just, it feels like the car's easier to place. See, that, I feel like that wouldn't have happened if we were in first person, because we went just a little bit too far on the angle, but... Again, that's just one of those things that, like, I have more practice in first-person view, but it's also because I think I enjoy first-person view more, so it's it's kind of inevitable that that's where you're going to spend more of your time. God, wheel spin at 115 miles an hour in sixth gear. What a... Uh-oh. Like, what a setup. <laughs> All right, let's go. Wow, that zone starts early, or that section starts early. I'm trying to figure out exactly where it starts, because I feel like if I figure that out... Okay, yep, know exactly where it starts. Right as you start to go up the hill. There we go. Come on, come on, point the nose of the car at the... Ooh, God. Point the nose of the car in... And then let the tail follow it. Try and run to the outside. Oh! I was going to try and drag the edge of the car along the outside of the corner. And I was doing it, like, really well for a while. But, oh god. Try and get that back. Here we go. Oh god. Oh, jeez! Okay, remember what I said about third-person view? Now you're really starting to see it. I, I told you guys I was not uh, not anywhere close to... It just... Oh, God. Third-person view frustrates me sometimes. It really does. It just never never felt quite as... And, and sometimes my opinion changes on this, but, like, it, it just doesn't usually feel like I have as much control as I do in first-person. And that's, like, plain and simple. At least in Forza. Put it that way. At least in Forza.
Come on, follow through, follow through, follow through. It's gone. Yep. Oh my god, it's not gone. Jeez, that was that was probably one of the best saves I think I've ever had here. And not only that, but that goes to show how easy this car is to save. It would definitely be a really good chassis for beginners, I think. I mean, obviously, it would be a good chassis for beginners. It's an S chassis, but still... Oh, God. Get it, and a little bit. Uh-oh. Nope, 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 nope. Ooh, jeez. All right, I'm going to try and sort of slightly drag that wall. I got close. Didn't end up touching it, though. I wanted to touch it. Really? See, that's where if you unload the car the wrong way, it is gone. 100% gone. Nope. It's, man, the second you let it go, it is gone. Keep it sliding. There we go. Uh oh. Decent save. Decent ish save. I also find, though, that sometimes, even though I feel like I'm not as good in third person as I am in first person, sometimes I'll turn a higher score in third person than I will in first, which is weird. Took out at least half the cones. Went a little too wide, but oh! Big time lost it there. Okay, we're going to do an experiment here real quick. We're going to do an experiment here real quick. Okay, so in that last lap, I've had a few offs in third person view. Back to first person, and we're going to attack these really aggressively. See, like, no problem. Especially this section here. I don't know why, dude. I just find everything so much easier to do and so much easier to... <gasps> Went off. Don't, don't, don't... Yeah, no, that didn't... That didn't happen. Don't pay attention to that. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, swing back the other way. Why are... Oh, are you serious? I caught my wing on the... I caught my wing on the edge and lost it. That was 90 up the hill, which I wish that they would give me a bonus for that. Ugh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. This car, I think you have to just relax when you drive it. If you don't relax, then you're not going to get anywhere. It's like if you tense up and try to dr drift this car, it won't work. It's not because if you if you tense up and try to drive it like you would drive like anything, you know, uh, well, really, even cars that are super twitchy, you have to relax to drive them too. And this car is not particularly twitchy, but like, man, if you relax while you drive this, you will apparently roll it three times well I was not expecting to roll that car three times holy crap um I kind of want to just see what what happened and like exactly where it dug into the ground well, that may have been four times okay it just so it literally just dug into the ground right there on that exit. Or right there on the outside edge of the corner. That's, that's, you know what? That's exactly how I, pr I would prefer to handle that corner. Spin it around, get back going again, and across the line. So, the car is really good. Um, the car is really good and I'll be using it more. I'll be you know, refining the tune and using it kind of on my own. But I think that it just goes to show also, you can be a lot better in one view than in a different view. And I mean, that's just, 
that's just the way it is sometimes. Um, but this car was really fun. I enjoyed building it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comments down below what you guys thought of it. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time. Talk to you all later.